Bulaginaka, my name is Lucia and I'm from the beautiful island of Laos and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. My name is Casey, I'm from Tabua. We love Today FM in Tabua. Today FM rocks. My name is Selena, I'm from Tauvenga Vengamba. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Hola, my name is Carlo. I love listening to the music in Today FM in Malak Ellen. Today FM rock. Today's hit music on Today FM. In the new serial rapist cops 30 year sentence for rape. Sugar protest march fails to draw numbers. And Nico Nawaikula resorts to racism in parliament. From the studios of FBC Suva, Jackie Spade. 40-year-old security officer Chosuo Dolonandolu has been sentenced to life imprisonment and has to serve a minimum of 30 years before he can be considered for a pardon by the president. High Court Judge Justice Salesi Temo sentenced Dolonandolu this morning after he was convicted of one count of murder, six counts of rape, one count of abduction and one count of indecently annoying a female. Shireen Shivan with more details. Joshua Dolunundolu smiled all the way to the courtroom, unremorseful and no regrets. Are you feeling guilty? You feel one person, one innocent While handing down one of the harshest sentences to him, Judge Justice Salesi Temo said Dolunundolu had shown all height of evil and branded him as a serial rapist and a child murderer. Justice Temo said the facts of the case were quite disturbing as Dolunundolu had committed the offense on girls in his own community. The judge said Dolunundolu committed the first offense when he was 22 years of age and continued doing the same in the last 18 years. The Lunandolu raped four girls between 1998 and 2016 and murdered the fourth victim in Deumba last year. Justice Temo said the Lunandolu is the worst nightmare for any parent who has a daughter. Prosecutor Lee Burney had also said earlier this week that the case concerns every parent. Life of the four girls have forever been changed by the heinous acts of the serial rapist. There's hope that the guilty verdict and sentence will bring some form of relief to the victims and their family members. Sharin Shivan, FBC News. An expected show of strength by National Farmers Union cane farmers embarrassingly fizzled out this morning when only a handful showed up for the protest march. Although the NFU had said they were expecting more than a thousand farmers to march, only around 60 people marched this morning, including women and children. Eleanor Tarangai View reports. The petition is said to contain 420 signatures of cane farmers who feel they have been discriminated against the allocation of the $10 million assistance package by government. National Farmers Union President Surendra Lal says they want to know the specific allocation of this fund. There is no information of, as to who has given and what has been given. That is the biggest question coming up. If they do want us to be known, the facts, then they print, them in, print the whole uh, list in the media so we we'll know who has received what amount of assistance. The petition also consists of the grievances of the farmers with regards to cane price, which they feel should be set at a minimum price of $100 a ton, $80 of which should be paid by the Fiji Sugar Corporation and $20 by the government. If you look at the, uh, the farmers involved in the rice industry, there's a guaranteed price of $750. And if you look at the copra price, it is guaranteed by government sitting at around about $1,200 to $1,600. So why, why can't government guarantee the sugar or the cane price? Cane money should be hundred dollar per ton next year and further on. And we want more bonus. Yes, we have got the bonus. Uh, this one was very less for farmers. We can't uh, get ready to harvest the cane. The protest march started from the office of the National Farmers Union and went through Lambasa town. The farmers are marching with their petition in hand and calling on government to do justice by them and pay them right. We are marching today because uh, from so long the farmers are not benefited at all for the cane price. And uh, we want to raise up our issue that uh, we want the cane price to be high so that the farmers can benefit. Members of the 
National, National Farmers uh, Unit. Uh, we call due respect to the delegation for me to be here to receive your petition. I must uh, first thank you for the peaceful uh, show of your uh, concern. Uh, and I'm, I want to assure you that uh, this petition uh, will now be forwarded to the Prime Minister. This afternoon, Attorney General Ayaz Sayed Kayum told FBC News Lambasa farmers have already been allocated $3.3 million from the $10 million assistance package. Well, when the Honorable Prime Minister talks about the politicization of the sugarcane industry, it's precisely what he means. That you have these people who have vested interests because they belong to political parties. I mean, where was the General Secretary of the National Farmers Union? Where was the General Secretary of the Fiji Labour Party? Was he marching there? I mean, obviously there are other people who are marching there. And it could, you could also see that there, I think uh, we were told that there are people from other political parties who are marching there too. So it becomes a political issue. The petition also highlights the farmers' rejection of the two sugar reform bills, calls for an independent inquiry into FSC, calls for the merger of the Cane Producers Association and the Growers' Council, the regulation of harvesting and haulage fees, the recognition of growers' unions, and the reinstatement of various sugar institutions. The National Farmers' Union is also urging government to have a roundtable discussion with all sugar stakeholders, including the Minister for Sugar, so they can find amicable solutions to their grievances. Eleanor Turangaiwio, FBC News. Opposition MP Nikon Nawaikula today resorted to racial attacks in Parliament. Nawaikula had to be told twice to withdraw his statements, which were false in nature, resulting in the Speaker, Dr. Chiko Luveni, intervening. Kelly Vadala reports. We expected you as an indigenous person a lot more. Order. This Adalpa member claimed the identity of the indigenous people was taken away by calling all citizens in the country Fijians. Attorney General Aya Said Kayum says this was a false accusation and it's unfortunate that the issue was even raised in parliament. You know, he said that uh, the word uh, Fijian should not be uh, uh, used for anybody else. He's saying it was a stolen word, etc. When his own leader, the leader of opposition in parliament, uh, actually he said last year, well, you know, we think that everybody should be called a Fijian. So they're contradicting each other and I think there's obviously a lack of coordination, lack of uh, philosophical adherence to what they want uh, within the party itself. And unfortunately it's manifesting itself into a very sort of nonsensical approach to debate. The opposition MP also questioned the ethnicity of Minister for Employment, Chonil Samate, who says it was an offensive issue. Fijian applies to everybody that's a citizen of this country, and one of the important things that we need to do as a country is to get everybody to be on board, to see themselves as part of one country. So that's, that's my feeling, it's been my long-held feeling for many, many years. Said Kayum says finding solutions to ordinary people's everyday problems should be a key discussion in parliament rather than debating on racial issues. When political parties start doing that, you know they are desperate. Uh, they are becoming very desperate. They are not actually giving you solutions about how to uh, improve uh, the uh, education quality, about increasing job creation. I mean, all those sorts of things. That's what the ordinary Fijians are concerned about. We talk about that. To take away from us. In the same debate, Nawai Kula was told to withdraw his statement that the Itoke community did not have any more control on their own land. However, Syed Kayum confirmed to FBC News that this was an absolute lie. If that was the case, they would have lost control of their land. The constitution, in fact, is the only constitution that gives um, such a huge level of comfort and protection to the individual land-owning units. Said Kayum says the young generations are not interested on racial issues as they are more focused on the future. And they have realized that all Fijians need to work together as citizens to build a better Fiji. Kelly Vavala, FBC News. A motion for a commission of inquiry into incidents of brutality, torture and deaths at the hands of the disciplined forces has been defeated in Parliament. Opposition MP Moses Mbulitavu moved the motion, saying the people of Fiji need answers. The motion called for a judicial commission to look into cases of abuses against Fijians by police and military personnel after the events of December 2006. There were involvement of police and military officers in intimidating people, torturing them, and in some cases killing them, and I've said have left behind, uh, as I said before, left behind 
a bad mark of torture and where people, a people's life have been taken. We submit that these matters that have been brought or any case of brutality are dealt with independently. And in fact, even prior to that, we do not want cases of brutality. Sayed Kayum also pointed out that all incidents of brutality have been brought to court and some perpetrators have already been sent to prison. He also says Fiji has various laws to govern the disciplined forces, protect the rights of Fijians and detained persons. Unnecessary. Uh, we already have a system in place. What we all should be doing, including lawyers and others, need to actually commit to the system. The legal provisions are there. And as demonstrated by Honorable Bulitabu in his statement, that countries, sometimes with the best of laws, will have cases of brutality because you have one or two people going renegade. The Attorney General says Scotland Yard, the police arm of the British government, is also helping build capacity in the Fiji police force. Community awareness. Let's not obfuscate the issues. Let's talk about this fear of oppression, etc. None of that exists. It's only in their minds. It's a political ploy. Absolutely, Madam Speaker, it's a fact. The motion for a commission of inquiry was defeated by 27 votes to 17. Six MPs did not vote. Edwin Nand, FBC News. Government will soon impose a minimum wage rate for more than 10,000 security officers around the country. In an effort to establish wage rates for each industry, government says they take into consideration how these rates will have an impact on the economy. Labor Minister Chone Osumate assures members of parliament today they are looking across the national wage rate of all industries. Osumate says all industries are covered in the Employment Relations Act 2017, except for military, police and corrections officers. Opposition member Semesa Karvaki says these officers have the skills that should commit with reasonable new re remunerations. So in, in terms of security, this is one of the issues that we have in our country. We have a lot of security companies and sometimes because there are so many and they're all competing for the same market, the price needs to go down. Still to come, farmers, supermarket, former supermarket employees, front court, an art gallery showcases Fijian talent. Details after the break. Nimbula Vinaka, Naya Vanguna, and the Moal Rada Ranavika, or Tikungana Town of Singapore, and the Talisak and Avarong and Bula Fan, number two in a series. We are the Rachubuni Kurnabili, Burani Batskara and Barabin Arna, the Talitakina Varong and Bula Fan, number two in a series. Bula! Bula FM, number 2 and Seri. The Ministry of Labour will be reviewing the process of recruiting people under the Seasonal Workers Scheme. Minister Chone Osumate says they have had cases in 2015 and earlier this year where workers under the scheme absconded in Australia. Pranita Prakash reports. There are revelations that a number of people who absconded under the scheme were from the urban areas. We'll be reviewing our processes to make sure that we get the right kind of people. They can work, some of them can save up to $20,000, bring that money back into the community, upgrade their lives, upgrade their community and continue to persist in uh, enhancing their quality of life. Opposition MP Aseri Randrondro then raised questions on exploitation of workers and whether the ministry had any monitoring mechanism. Does the ministry have the necessary uh, infrastructure to, to monitor that the workers that were sent out on this scheme are not abused by the employers overseas? Usamate assured that the companies of farms willing to employ people from Fiji comply with certain requirements to ensure the safety of these workers. Our High Commission staff, they have been going around and talking to our workers that are in Australia and New Zealand, but now the government is also considering how we can have a more permanent um, uh, people in Australia and New Zealand to walk around and work with employers to make sure that there is compliance with basic labour standards. Usumate says the seasonal worker scheme is open to anyone, however there are certain requirements that need to be fulfilled. He says the final decision is made by the employers. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. 
The Fiji Roads Authority has so far completed 10 out of the 13 bridges and crossings that were devastated by tropical cyclone Winston and other previous cyclones. When asked in Parliament this morning on the progress of bridge repairs, Infrastructure Minister Parveen Bala stated that the FRA is utilizing $23 million from its 2016 and 2017 budget allocation to complete these repair works. Bala says previous governments have neglected road infrastructure maintenance in past years. Madam Speaker, you will be surprised to hear that our inspection reveals that some of the bridges where there is a steel beam runs across were not even protected with the relevant rest guards. Total neglect, Madam Speaker. So now we have plans in progress and the works are underway. A 30-year-old former credit officer at 786 supermarket Suva appeared in the magistrate's court today. Milika Mbolatamana allegedly cost the company a loss of more than $42,000 and was refused bail. Pranita Prakash has more. With two counts of obtaining financial advantage by deception and dishonestly causing a loss. It is alleged that between 2013 and 2015, she obtained $42,680 from a businessman in Kandavu through a telemoney order. It's also alleged that she kept the money, causing her employer a loss of the same amount. Her lawyer made a bail application, which was strongly opposed by the prosecution on the grounds that the offence was serious. The prosecution also informed the magistrate that there were other pending matters and police needed to complete the investigation. Bolatamana has been remanded in custody and will be appearing in court on the 6th of June. Pranita Prakash, FPC News. An art gallery housing the works of some of Fiji's more renowned artists has opened in Suva. 21K Gallery is the permanent home for five artists, namely Choso Tonganivalu, Mason Lee, Anareso Mumu, William Mbakalevu, and Wanga Buinriketi. The artists have worked alongside each other over 20 years, showcasing their outstanding works in various exhibitions. The full-time artists are hoping to not only earn a living from their creativity, but expose the general public to a diverse collection of contemporary Fijian art something that uh, we artists have been uh, longing for instead of uh, waiting for um, annual exhibitions to come our way. So this is an, uh, uh, an opportunity where, um, where we can display our works and uh, people, art lovers around Suva in Fiji or visitors that come in looking for local uh, artworks by local artists, this is a place where they can come and find that. Ahead in sports with Jamie, he will have the update from the T14 semi-finals for this weekend. But joining us next is Rachel with Business. Thank you, Jackie. Good evening and coming up after the break. The sorry market vendors turns new chapter. And in growing Fiji, road delays are concern for FRA. Stay with us. Whenever I want to tune in to listen to great music, I always tune in to my favorite radio station, Gold FM, only the classic. My name is Lita. We love listening to Gold FM here at the Fiji Hydro Resort and Spa. Gold FM, only the classic hits. We here at Tano Waterfront Lotoka love listening to Gold FM, only, only the, the classic, classic hits. hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Welcome back. Nasori market vendors are now connected to financial services thanks to the Australian government through the United Nations Development Program and UN Women. The project Market for Change allows vendors to engage with the financial services to ensure future savings and a boost to their economic growth. Savaya Tumbua has more. More than 2,000 market vendors at Nasori now have the chance to strengthen their business through financial services such as banks, insurance, micro-insurance, microfinance and mobile money. Instead of market vendors going to the financial providers of financial services, the, pro the providers of financial services are coming to the market. You know, we want to connect them so that they become included in the uh, financial services available, available here in our country. So this is the very purpose of uh, what we are uh, here today. Are doing here today. 
It's uh, very good. It's uh, gonna benefit a lot of, lot of people. This initiative has broadened our knowledge on ways of saving for the future. Nosori Town Council Chief Executive Akhtar Ali says market vendors represent the core component of SMEs in Fiji and their contribution remains at 12% of the GDP, which equates to about $800 million. Uh, we don't want them to spend a lot of time traveling to this institution to seek their services in terms of loans and all that. So we have, today we have uh, brought all these institutions together to the market vendors and we hope that the market vendors will take advantage of these services in order to grow and develop their business. This is the first financial seminar and fair facilitated by the UNDP and UN Women where entrusted market vendors are invited to engage with financial services to register for their financial options. Samira Tambua, FBC News. Now with a look at the ever-changing economic scenes, here's Savanada from HFC Bank. Vinaka. Yesterday we saw a weakening of the U.S. currency due to unfavorable Federal Open Market Committee meeting minutes, which saw policymakers hold off on raising interest rates. This morning we saw more favorable U.S. economic data. Despite a forecast for unemployment to increase to 238,000, it only increased to 234,000. This has compensated for the widening of the trade balance deficit for April, resulting in a stronger U.S. dollar today by 15 points to stand at 0 0.4699. However, rest assured, on a seven-day moving average, the U.S. dollar has weakened this week when compared to the same time last week. Looking on to tomorrow, Friday over there, we expect a stronger U.S. dollar as they roll out their gross domestic product for the first quarter, expected to increase from 0.7% to 0.9%. That's all for me this week. Thanks for the updates, On to today's exchange rates. The Fijian dollar strengthened against the Chinese yuan and the American dollar to close at 325 and 46 cents respectively. Closer to home, the Australian dollar went up to close at 162 cents and the New Zealand dollar also rose to close at 66 cents, while the PNG Kina dropped closing at 131. On to the commodities market, uh, the oil prices rose to close at 51.41 a barrel. Gold went up to close at, rather went down to close at 1,256 an ounce, and silver went up to close at 17.20 an ounce. And in growing Fiji tonight, most projects done by Fiji Roads Authority contractors are completed behind schedule. This was revealed by the FRA Chief Executive John Hutchinson during the Central Division Road Forum this morning. Hutchinson says as a result, FRA is working on changing its contractors' recruitment criteria. I'm struggling to find any project, and most of them will let on lowest price conforming. And I'm struggling to find any project, and it doesn't matter whether it was let to a local company or an international company. I'm struggling to find any project that was delivered on time or on budget. And in some instances, the budgets have increased by 30, 40, 50, 60 percent. And that tells me something's wrong. We are moving away from lowest price conforming and we're moving to best value. And that's business this evening. Jamie joins you now with the latest in sports. Naka Rachel and good evening in sports after the break. Fiji held to a one all draw. And Super Rugby gate takings revealed. Details coming up. Mirchi FM is hot. An Epeli Saukuru goal gave Fiji a one all draw against the Solomon Islands in an international football friendly in Suva last night. Despite the stalemate, Fijian coach Christophe Gamel was satisfied with the result. Rohit Deo reports. 
Fiji started the match well and some good play by Christopher Wasasala, so Ipeli Saukuru put Fiji ahead 1-0 in the first spell. Captain Ben Aminio Matei Nangara had earlier saved the penalty after Ramiro Tekiate handled the ball inside the box. The visiting side was awarded another penalty as Vunyu Diti Komai Merike fouled inside his own area. Mikali Alafa made no mistake to equalize. The Solomon Islands dominated possession in territory in the second spell but failed to find the final touch as Matei Nangara made some brilliant saves to keep Fiji in the game. The Vistas could have scored more goals but the Fijian defence were praised keeping the scores level. The positive thing that we take out from this game will be the, the chances that we created um, uh, from um, our build-up and, and, and stuff as well, which is a positive for us. You know? Fiji's coach Christoph Gamel praised these players for a gallant effort. How to play together uh, after one training like that, I really, I hat off for, for this boy and all, huh? all the group, because uh, who enter in the game was concerned. Matei Nangara says his team will give an improved performance in the second match. We just have to go back on the drawing board and work out the mistakes we did. Then uh, maybe come on Sunday we'll try and rectify all the mistakes today and try and uh, rectify it uh, during the game on Sunday. Again. The two teams meet again on Sunday at 3 p.m. at Lotokas Churchill Park. Rohit Deo, FBC Sports. Backline players John Stewart and Benito Masilevu will join the Vodafone Flying Fijian squad for their June and July test matches. This was confirmed by Flying Fijian's coach John McKee on FPC TV's Vodafone Sports Lounge show. The duo will replace Nemani Landolo and Aseli Tukurutuma. Tukurutuma unfortunately got suspended um, from a dangerous tackle in his match for the London Irish last week, so he's been suspended for four weeks, so he'll be unavailable for the June test, but will be available for us for the uh, Rugby World Cup qualifiers. So John uh, Stewart will come into the, into the squad to, to replace there. The Flying Fijians play Australia in Melbourne on the 10th of next month, and for more on the team, be sure to watch the Vodafone Sports Lounge show straight after tonight's news bulletin. Three Fijians will start for their respective teams in the first semi-final of the top 14 rugby competition in France tomorrow. The Fiji Sports Council earned over $180,000 in gate takings from the Super Rugby match played between the Crusaders and Chiefs at Suva Zenz at Stadium last week. Acting Pri Prime Minister Aya Said Kiyum revealed this when responding to a question by opposition member Prem Singh in Parliament this morning. Meli Tavanga has the details. The direct figures in terms of the sales of tickets, in terms of the sales of the food and drinks, etc., on the site itself. But of course, Madam Speaker, it also builds capacity in the Fiji Sports Council. They've just never seen such a, a buzz in the Super Rugby atmosphere, the actual grounds. Eh? The people who are here is just a closer coordination with our New Zealand uh, ticketing partners to ensure that we, we release the tickets earlier. Namaka Public School believes it can pull off a few surprises at the National School Swimming Championship which started today at the Damodo Aquatic Centre. Namaka Public has 24 swimmers at the event which features 44 schools from all over Fiji competing over two days. Coach Mikaele Nangila says they are coming in as underdogs but he is confident of bagging a few gold medals for the school. I got a uh, feeling confident of uh, there's a few young ones who are already in the club uh, will uh, win goals today. Uh, when we go back to Nandi, I'll be targeting like uh, six or seven gold medals for the school. That's it from sports this evening. Catch weather later on with Angie and the new media right after the break. New eSight glasses allowing the visually impaired to see things for the first time. That's coming up. Kerong <laughs> Thank you. 
In new media tonight, there are an estimated 39 million blind people in the world and another 200 million are visually impaired. But now a new technology called the e-vision glasses will literally open the eyes of many. Weather time now with Angie. Hello there and welcome to the weather world. Hooray! It's finally Friday and I can feel the excitement level building. And the mood is all set when we have perfect weather conditions to build up on that excitement. Now looking at today in the west, it was mostly sunny, clouds thickened for a bit but to no sign of any rain. Eastwards from Pek Haba to Suva, it was generally dry and let me tell you, it was just so beautiful. And up in Vanuolevu, there was a mixture of sun and clouds. Conditions felt much warmer at 31 degrees, perfect for suntan. At sea, easterly winds 15 to 20 knots with moderate to rough seas. And for the tides, low tide will be at 104 tomorrow morning with a high tide at 714. Sunrise will be at 629. For tomorrow, have your barbecues, jog around and swim to your heart's content because it's not only Saturday, the weather will be just on our side as well, which is a blowout bonus. Tomorrow's stems, Lotoka and Lambasa will be warm with highs of 30. And looking ahead to Sunday, conditions will be much the same. And that, Jackie, is our FPC weather for tonight. Thanks so much for that, Angie. On Fiji Pulse today, we asked, should more traffic lights be installed around the country? I think we should have more traffic lights around the country because it will help us uh, pedestrians as we cross, especially in wider roads. Yes, I think so, because uh, there are plenty cars, more cars. Yes, it should be because uh, it helps uh, pedestrians and drivers. Yes, there should be more traffic light on the road. In the world of the weird and the wonderful, easily accessible food at work might contribute to oversnacking. Here's what you can do to help resist the urge. Recapping the main story, serial rapist murder cops 30-year sentence. Sugar protest march fails to draw numbers and Niko Nawaikula resorts to racism in parliament. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station Gold FM. To our poll question, this week we are asking... Should plastic bag usage be banned in Fiji? Visit our FBC website to answer. Before we go, today's shot of the day, taking a swim as the sun sets at the Korotongo Beach in Coral Coast, sent by Amasa and Rusiate Kunambuli. Send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page FBC News or you can also follow and tweet us your news tips at fbc underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. That was your FBC News for tonight from the team and I. Have a safe and enjoyable weekend. Bye for now. My name is Sant Kumar, I'm Radio Fiji 2 Sunta hai, and Tawa is the best Radio Fiji 2. I'm Radio Fiji 2, we are the best favorite station. My name is Bruce Rao, I'm Radio Fiji 2, and I'm the best Radio Fiji 2, and I'm the best Radio Fiji 2. My name is Kabuli Tawa, and I'm Ramesh Chan, and I'm the best Radio Fiji 2, and I'm the best Radio Fiji 2. Radio Fiji 2, the country of the country.